Have your rooster started crowing, your hen started laying eggs, but you're wondering, when do I exactly go about incubating the eggs? When do I know when it's okay to incubate the eggs? I'm gonna get all that cleared up for you in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you wanna do it. So if you're a long time viewer, you probably know I've addressed this topic in video already. It's been a while though, and I've got a lot of questions coming in recently from new viewers and new subscribers about this. When do you know when it's time to go ahead and start incubating your eggs? So I figured I'd just do another quick video here, address that, get that covered for everybody. Okay, so let's start off. First things you're gonna look for is, of course, your females need to be laying eggs. I mean, duh, <laughs> you, know, you gotta know that already. Uh, but you also should be hearing your rooster start crowing. You should see breeding behavior. You should be able to watch your hens and see uh, that they're getting bred. Uh, the, uh, the males, I'm, I'm looking to see here what I can see. Here's a sign of breeding behavior. Let me see if I can get one of these birds that maybe, yeah, there we go. There's a good example right there. Oh, come, calm down, calm down, calm down. Okay, if you don't actually see the breeding behavior going on, you maybe hear the roosters crowing, this is a sign you can look for. You can see the back of her head, hopefully that's focusing, she's missing some feathers on the back of her head. And that's completely common, that's very normal behavior. Let me put her back in there so I don't stress her out too much. There you go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's very common. You're gonna notice that whenever the breeding starts because what happens is the roosters grab the back of the female's head, the feathers on the back of their head when they, when they mate. So you're gonna see that baldness on the back of their head. It's common, don't worry about it. Unless you've got too many roosters to hens, and I always recommend one rooster for every four to five hens. If you've got more than that, if you've got one rooster at every one hen, one rooster at every three hens, you know, they, that could end up being a little bit, I mean, they can overbreed the females and really do some damage to them. But, Assuming you got your hen to rooster ratio right, you're gonna see just a little bald patch on the back of their head, it's nothing to worry about. If you see that behavior going on or you actually see the act of mating going on, it's usually gonna be about two weeks from that time that you should expect your eggs to be fertile. But instead of just guessing about it, there's an easy way to actually check, and that's just to check the fertility of the eggs themselves. Now I've got a couple of eggs I pulled out of the hutches this morning, so what I'm gonna do is crack them open in this dish right here and show you what I'm talking about here. So let me get these done. Uh, I grab my scissors here. If you don't have quail egg scissors, you need to pick up some quail egg scissors. These are life changing. I think I've got them in my Amazon shop. If not, I'll go back and look and make sure they're added to it. These are the easy way to get into a quail egg. So it works like a uh, cigar cutter. You just put it on the fat end of the egg and chop the top of the egg off and dump the egg out. All right, let me see what I can see here. And of course it went upside down. Okay, so this didn't go upside down. This is not a fertile egg. Well, let me turn the camera so you can see. This is not a fertile egg. And one thing you can tell right away is there's no white spot on the egg. And, uh, or on the yolk itself. I'm kind of swirling it around to make sure. I can't flip it over either. But anyways, not a fertile egg. Let me dump that one out. We'll try another one here. All right, this is gonna be really hard to see on film, I think. In reality, it's much, much easier. Okay, so what we're looking for, you may notice there's a white spot on this egg. It's really faint, so I don't know how well that's showing up in video. But there's a white dot in there. This one's a little bit easier to see. You can see the white dot right there. And this one's got a white dot in it right there. That just means it's a mature egg. That does not necessarily mean it's a fertile egg. What you're looking for in fertility is a bull's eye ring around that white spot. Now again, this is really hard to see on video. It's actually easier when you're looking at it in person yourself. So, you know, I for, forgive me if it's not showing up that well on video. When you look for yourself, you'll be able to see it a little bit easier. This is just a white spot, that's it. Just a white spot, it's not fertile. This one, however, has a white spot with a bullseye ring around it, a little brown ring right around the white spot. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but if you look on your own eggs, you should be able to tell. And that means that that egg is fertile. This one here is white, but no ring around it, just a white spot. Again, hard to see on video, 
when you look at it yourself, you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to tell there is a little faint blue, uh, brown bullseye ring around that white spot. That means that egg is fertile. This egg doesn't even have a white spot on it, so it's not even a mature egg. It couldn't be fertilized either way. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. White spot only means it's a mature egg. It could be fertilized. White spot with a ring around it means it is fertile. No white spot at all means it's not a mature egg. All right, so again, I apologize for it being difficult to show on video. It's actually not that hard to see with your eyes, but it just it, there's not enough contrast in it for it to really show up on video very well. So what you're going to do is take your eggs, once, you, once you've noticed the breeding behavior of your, of your birds, give them a week or two, and then start cracking open some eggs. Or if you're eating them, just check them while you're eating them anyway. There's no problem with eating fertile eggs. It's not any different than eating non-fertile eggs. doesn't matter. Uh, but just check your eggs. Whenever you start getting somewhere around 75, 80% fertility, like 80% of your eggs ha are fertile or have that bullseye ring around that white spot, you can bet it's a good time to go ahead and start incubating. And again, usually that's about two weeks after you start breeding, start getting good egg production out of your birds. You're looking at about two weeks and then you can start incubating the eggs. Assuming that you know all the conditions are right, you don't, you're not getting like, we're gonna have like 30 degree, low of 30 degree tonight. Even if those eggs are fertile, I don't want to try to incubate those because that low temperature below freezing has probably killed them off anyway. So that wouldn't be a good egg to incubate. But hopefully that's kind of making sense to you. You understand what I'm saying. Okay, just one more shot. I think it may be showing up a little bit better. The light has changed just a little bit. Again, you see a white dot on this egg, a white dot on this egg, but no ring. That one's got a bullseye ring around it. Hopefully that's showing up. So that's the fertile egg. These three are not fertile. That one's not even mature. So it's not time for me to start incubating these eggs yet. I've got very low fertility. Give it another couple of days, a week, and I'll probably start seeing almost all the eggs being fertile and I should be ready to start incubating. All right, so with that taken care of, hopefully that has cleared it up for you guys. If you had questions about it, hopefully that makes sense. You can kind of tell what I'm talking about right there. I'm gonna go put these eggs up and while I got you guys on video here, We'll show you kind of the setup that I've got going for the meat chickens. They're coming next week, so I've finalized the brooder, got it all set up, got it ready to go. I'll take you in there and show you how that's all set up. All right, it's a little bit cramped in here, so it's going to be a little bit tricky for me to show this to you, but there we go. Got the uh, lights, the heat lights turned on. Um, so I've made a few modifications if you've been watching. Let me get in here so I can show you. All right, so first things, I moved the little lights down a little bit. Uh, they were clamped to this right here. It just wasn't low enough to warm this thing up quite enough. You know, I've got a temperature sensor here that tells me, the temperature sensor is right down there, almost at ground level, right under the lights. It tells me how warm it's getting. Right now it's at 60 degrees. And this is warming it up to about 90, 95 degrees. That should be good, right underneath the heat lamps anyway. We've got some real cold weather coming down in the 30s at night. I mean, it's not gonna be that way all day. But down in the 30s at night, and a low 30s, I think 29 tomorrow night. I don't have the birds yet. We're, we're you know, right down to our average last frost date, so we really shouldn't have too many problems with you know, any more real cold weather, but it could happen, so I wanna make sure that I can keep this thing warm enough for those birds. I've um, got the feeder here. Feeder's just a normal feeder. Got the water here behind me. I think you might be able to see that. It's just a uh, several quart watering system. You know, just easy gravity fed water and a uh, water heater tub there to put that water in so I don't, you know, if it splashes out or whatever, it's not getting all over the bedding and making the bedding wet. I think I am going to have to put some more bedding in here though. Um, I'm just using hay right now and uh, it's just a little bit on the thin side, I think. So I think if I fill that up with a little bit more hay, um, that's going to give me the ability to just remove soiled hay out of there without having to worry about adding a lot more bedding to it as it goes. So I'll probably do that. I've still got, you know, over half a bale of hay here, which uh, I can't grab a hold of. So I've got plenty to, you know, just break up and throw in here and uh, give them some room to, to scratch around and all those kinds of things. So anyway, all set up. I think we're ready to go. Just turn the heat lights on and they're already up to about 70 degrees at the bottom, you know, right underneath the heat lamps and it's still climbing. It's still doing pretty good. So I think we're, we're set up. I think we're going to be just fine uh, with the, the height of the heat lamps themselves. I did put a screw in here um, in this board. I don't know if you can see this or not. That keeps the heat lamp on there, keeps it from falling off. This board is screwed into that, so it's not coming off. Oh, and the cardboard. Um, you guys have been following. 
Now I started off with trying to tape this cardboard up here to make this brooder box a little bit taller. This is an old, um, this is the uh, bed liner out of my truck. And um, it, it just wasn't quite tall enough. I think it's only like seven, 18 inches tall or something like that. I wanted to get it up to at least two feet tall. So I used cardboard to extend those walls up. Good, cheap, disposable. Don't have to worry about ruining it, any of that kind of stuff. Um, I tried to duct tape it initially, which worked great for like three days. And then the duct tape started failing and it all started falling down. So I've gone back through and I've just stapled it to the side of the bed. And it's on there now. It's not, it's not coming off. It's on there good now. It's good and sturdy. So I think we're all set up and ready for the birds. Looking forward to them. We should get them about midweek uh, towards the end of the week. So of course, whenever I get them, I'll have video uh, coming out on those birds and you'll be able to watch me as I raise the uh, meat chickens up. We got Cornish cross coming. That's what they are. So anyway, I think that's it for this video. Wanted to cover a, a topic, like I said, I've covered before, but I'm getting a lot of questions about it lately. So it's obviously something that's on everybody's mind. Want to make it something I can address easily for everybody and uh, hopefully get that cleared up for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, God bless.